Hello everyone, today I'll talk about how we are using and planning to extend our use of eBPF specifically for microservices observability. So what makes me talk about eBPF and what actually qualifies me? A couple of things, uh, I'm not a Linux developer, I'm working on monitoring observability and performance broadly. Uh, Multi-tenant platforms and microservices are my focus area. EBPF gives us new capabilities to do things we haven't done before, and this talk is going to mention how we think about it in the microservices observability context and what's the potential here. I came here to talk about microservices, but let me begin here with Linux. EBPF is a kernel extension, and traditionally speaking, uh, Linux has a large variety of diagnostics and performance tools. I'm not sure if you've seen this great collective from uh, Brandon Gregg, but it goes through various layers and the availability of the tools and it gives us an image of you know what to use to troubleshoot each layer. Linux uh, had, had this, it still has this rich ecosystem, uh, it's great, but there are two main difficulties with it. As you look into this, uh, you see that an application relies on so many layers, uh, but the diagnostics data coming from these layers don't necessarily have that like granularity. So it's hard to be able to, you know, always see, hey, what's the impact of my app or my request on these kernel-wide subsystems? The second thing is there are so many layers, different tools and different APIs to gather this type of, you know, diagnostics data. It requires a lot of work to engage with these tools and it's not really easy to extend, you know, the data coming from Linux itself. Well, this is how eBPF was born. It's, it's, you know, a programmable and an extendable way to diagnose Linux by writing small programs to intercept things and collect events. So what does eBPF do? eBPF is a very flexible mechanism that allows you to hook into user and kernel space to collect events of your interest. By using eBPF, you can hand off a program written in C from the user space and attach it to certain places. In this case, in this example, I'm going to diagnose networking events. eBPF programs can mutate data structures called B PF maps and allow user space programs to read that collected data. And then, you know, you can take the data out and process and export it as metrics, logs, events, or traces. eBPF can hook into quite a large number of interesting things. You can hook it into function calls, and this is common for profiling and runtime execution tracing. You can hook into, um, similarly, into system calls, it can collect networking events, so you can report all the networking going on in a box. Um, and the other thing is you can attach eBPF programs into kernel trace points. But let's take a step back. Let's talk about how does these new capabilities help us in the context of microservices. Before moving on to that, let me cover some of the big challenges about microservices observability. These challenges differentiate microservices observability from traditional Linux troubleshooting and may give you an idea of where traditional Linux tools didn't quite work well, but eBPF could be a better tool to work with. So the first one, in a microservices world, we don't only monitor VMs or processes. We care about the availability of these services and the user's critical path as a whole. When a request comes in and goes through various services all the way down to the storage, I don't primarily care which VMs are serving this request and the underlying availability of the VMs or the processes. I only start to think about them when there's an outage and an efficiency issue. And when things go down, um, I want to understand what service or services caused the outage. Then I want to know what I know about these services and their underlying resources to either mitigate or resolve the issue. I have to begin with identifying the particular service or RPC that has failed. And then I begin to wonder, then I can begin to wonder actually about the underlying tasks, VMs, processes, and etc. I have to have a broader picture before starting to question the things that are Linux components. This is why new technologies like distributed tracing became popular in the last decade. It's not enough to monitor just the VMs or individual services. It's critical to be able to see things end to end. 
The second issue is the lack of context. When you think about our execution and scheduling models, we share the same box, the same virtual machine across various workloads. Linux kernel and its underlying components don't always have enough context to be able to enrich the, di the diagnostics data. Linux knows a lot about the current networking going on in a VM and can generate out-of-the-box telemetry data, but it doesn't know how to decorate the data to make it more useful. Think about having a VM with many running processes. This looks like a typical MN problem, right? First, uh, the diagnostics data coming from Linux should be labeled in a way so we can see what's the impact of a particular process. But in a microservices world, it's more complicated than that. We primarily like to see the world from the perspective of RPCs. We care about what's impacting us during the execution of a particular RPC. This is complicating the MN problem quite significantly because we have multiple, tens of thousands of RPCs handled by the same process. Then, in a containerized world, we isolate our workloads with containers, but beyond this, we logically group them as Kubernetes pods running in a namespace or an ECS task in a logical ECS service. These are logical groupings or namings, but it's important to collect them as context as we are collecting diagnostics data because it's how we navigate when we are looking at our dashboards. When we see a service being down, we want to be able to understand which cluster, which namespace, which pod. Context matters here. The other significant difference is we don't debug functions or syscalls like in the day of monoliths. Everything is an RPC or a REST request. Um, we need to view diagnostics data from the perspective of RPCs for that reason. Even if we found out um, that there is a bug or a performance issue, we begin debugging at the RPC level. Uh, once we find out that RPC handler is the origin, then we go and dig and find out you know, what might be going wrong in the lifetime of that RPC. Then we look into you know, the execution call trees you know, to dig further. This is where you know, our traditional debuggers or tracers are finally becoming more useful. The other big problem we have is the fact that there is so much data. And beyond the volume of the data, the vast majority of the diagnostics data is very repetitive. Think about the same RPC handler being invoked millions of times. Uh, when troubleshooting, we are really interested in like interesting cases such as like 99th percentile, right? Like in latency, for example. But events, logs, traces we collect uh, will be very similar apart from these edge cases. We aggressively aggregate some data to become metrics such as latency metrics, but it's not true for every signal type. That's why it's critical to be able to have an extensible model where we go and increase the level of data collection in runtime dynamically. This gives us an option to figure out where the issue might be originated at and go and safely extend the collection to capture more logs, traces, profiles, whatever you name to diagnose. So in microservices observability, we want an extensible model. And the big elephant in the room, I've been keeping this slide to myself, but given the vast number of different platforms, libraries, environments, instrumentation is at least a two-year roadmap for any organization. If you survey the compute platforms, cloud or not, the out-of-the-box instrumentation is pretty limited. The same applies to frameworks and libraries and other you know, third-party stuff. Um, not just getting out of the data is tough, but also making the data consistent is a tough job. Instrumentation has been growing you know, organically with manual efforts, so there's so much fragmentation in data types, propagation, and you know, data formats. And as a result, we face a very pretty, pretty inconsistent you know, world. Uh, sometimes being able to have a global view of all of your observable data is tough because it comes from, it, it comes in so many different shapes and formats and you might not be even able to ingest it all to the same system. Let me recap what I've been talking about the challenges in microservices observability. Networking is the core, out of the box instrumentation is essential, extensibility in runtime is critical, and being able to amplify and enrich data in user space with custom programs is required. These all align nicely with the capabilities of eBPF. And it's not surprising that we are trying to utilize these capabilities in the context of microservices. So how does exactly eBPF help? It's quite useful in a couple of different areas. 
eBPF events coming from networking layers can be converted into out-of-the-box telemetropon networking. Um, TCP, UDP, HTTP, gRPC metrics or events are possible to collect without any code changes. You can also inspect text and binary protocols such as database requests and responses. By relying on out-of-the-box network telemetry, it's possible to generate service maps without any code changes. This is an example from Cilium and Hubble. Um, it automatically collects and visualizes the service map in a Kubernetes cluster. A little bit of an unknown, but eBPF can also help distributed traces if you consistently propagate the trace headers. Data uh, collected with eBPF it can be used to generate distributed tracing spans if there's a trace context in the header. In this model, you can generate the header at load balancers or sidecar proxies. Then you can only focus on propagating it while you know span data is collected without any code changes um, or anything. eBPF is also used to collect profiles continuously. It can collect both user and kernel space profiles. Here uh, you see Pixie is collecting the profiles and adding them, um, adding some context such as Kubernetes pod name, um, the container name, uh, PID, and such. So you can continuously profile without having to change any code. eBPF allows us to decorate data with context. Um, for example, once you collect network events, we can ask a service discovery mechanism, or in this case, uh, the Kubernetes API server to resolve the source and destination IPs. And we can you know, resolve metadata associated with them to decorate the data we collected. And eBPF allows us to enable and disable collection in runtime. You can JIT compile new programs and attach new probes dynamically in the runtime. This allows us to momentarily enable and disable collection. There's been several community and industry tools that are already building on top of what I've been describing. Cilium and Hubble are, you know, the, doing a lot of like network diagnostics, service maps. They add uh, context to the data. Pixie does similar things um, and profiling. Flowmill is very focused on network diagnostics and low overhead. Not just the technology is there. We already have tools filling these gaps. So what's next? Is this a done deal? Not everyone is comfortable with writing C props, so um, a high-level language would fasten the adoption, maybe. Uh, making the eBPF agents installed and available on our de facto platforms might be useful, especially if you want to provide a high-level control plane out of the box. Imagine like you are provisioning an you know, ECS or EKS cluster and we give you an eBPF control plane to tweak the collection and configure where to export the data to. Um, you know, more platforms supporting eBPF would be great. At this point, not even every Linux platform is supporting it due to privileges and the security models. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, managed environments like Fargate supporting eBPF out of the box. We invest a lot in handling and processing the raw eBPF events. Every tool is currently implementing their own processing pipeline. There's a lot going on in the community, but it could be great to make some of these tools more reusable so we can easily grab um, mix and match what makes sense in terms of filtering processing and aggregations and build our own pipelines i think ebpf has a lot of potential to fill these gaps it has potential to be the canonical starting point to collect observability data in distributed systems we are interested in making it more available utilizing it better for networking and building high level components to make our engagement easier with ebpf that's all from me now. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out live or via email. Thanks again so much.